Before we start tonight's show, I just wanted to send a shout out to our listeners. Uh, This episode launches on our first anniversary. We've been a show for a year as of October 13th, 2021. Nearly 5,000 downloads already. 60 episodes. This will be episode 61. So 60 episodes in our first year, and this is the first one for year two. Guys, we couldn't do this if we didn't get the feedback from our listeners that you're enjoying it. So first off... A big thank you to our listeners. And now an apology. Uh, Travis is a little under the weather, and so he had to record from his house instead of with George. You will notice a difference. He sounds a little bit like Bane when they re-recorded him for Dark Knight Rises. So we're sorry about the poor quality of Travis's audio, but we are very proud of Travis for sticking it out uh, despite a pandemic and still joining us when he probably felt like utter dog crap. So big, big ups to Travis for gutting it out with us. And, uh, well, shoot, let's get this thing started. Uh, we're watching Halloween H2O for the second episode of the 2021 fall break. Welcome back to the Remedial Film Class Podcast Fall Break. George, Travis, let's hit the ground running here. We've got H2O, we've got Halloween 7, but it's only the third one you've seen. Guys, (laughs) how's everybody feeling tonight? Feeling pretty good. (laughs) That's a loaded (laughs) question. (laughs) We've got Travis coming in. Should we let the people know? That's, That's up, up to, to you, you Trav. Man. Yeah. I don't know, as long as the government doesn't come to my house. <laughs> I have the vid. Yeah, Travis <sighs> is a victim of the <sighs> Rona this week, so he is in isolation. Coming to us yes. from, it sounds like, the International <laughs> Space Station. Uh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, right. George, how you feeling, man? Uh, no symptoms yet. Glad you don't have anybody coughing on you in your room specifically. <laughs> <laughs> and also just generally i'm fine well good i'm great That's nice good guys we watched halloween seven but not seven h2o 20th anniversary of the original halloween george initial impressions was this the right movie to follow halloween two? Oh, i watched h2o just add water oh i'm sorry <laughs> it was a movie about mermaids i should have been more specific mermaids was it delightful <laughs> <laughs> was that one good uh no i'm just kidding i watched the right yeah. one the correct nice one. what was the question was this the right movie to follow halloween to uh i don't i don't know i haven't seen at any time did you feel like six. you didn't know what was happening no i knew exactly what at was going any on. time did you feel like you missed any story from three four five or six no not at all i rest my case this is the right one to follow Halloween to. <laughs> <laughs> that was science. We've got to follow it. That's right. Now, if nothing else clued you in that this was the right jumping off point, uh, movie opens with a familiar tune, and I'm not referring to the Halloween theme. Were you happy to hear Mr. Sandman back for a, a reprise? I definitely was. And then Smoking um, Nurse. Heck yeah. Yes, Smoking Nurse. Turns out her name um, is Marion by the way, because this movie and Halloween itself just couldn't help but name all of its characters after characters from the movie Psycho. Yo, Mm. dude, there's so much Psycho in this movie. A lot. A lot of Psycho. Oh my God, dude. So what was was Smoking Nurse's um, role here? She used to take care of Loomis or something? Well, she was his nurse. Okay. So... She she took care of Loomis. She was nice enough to keep a screenshot from the movie Halloween in 8x10 on her desk just to keep his memory alive. That was nice. Right. Yep. His headshot. 
<laughs> but coincidentally, she also then has all of his files, so she becomes a um, a target for the CIA trained yeah. uh, black bag job that <laughs> Michael Myers performed <laughs> in his research to try to uncover the deep state and where they hid Laurie Strode. <laughs> 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 he's more of a detective in this movie than most of the Batman movies. Oh, for sure. Uh, he puts Kilmer's Batman to shame. Yeah, absolutely. So the movie pops up uh, a hockey mask right up front. Were you pleased to see that, George? Oh, my God, dude. I was like, it's so great that they did that. Like, you know, your your first jump scare is a hockey mask. And you're like, <laughs> what? What movie is this? It's so good. <laughs> And then did you recognize so the actor wearing the hockey mask? I recognize him, but I don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, every time. Every time it cracks me up, and I, I don't know why. Uh, every time you ask and you get the same answer. It's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Who? Uh, he was at the time basically just coming off a third rock from the sun. But now mm-hmm. you might know him as, among other things, John Blake from The Dark Knight Rises. Who, spoiler alert, is Robin, spoiler alert, is Batman at the end of Dark Knight Rises? He inherits the cowl. And uh, I, everything. I don't, I don't remember that. I'm, I tried to block uh, Rises out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's not well, nice. See, it's just, it's a yeah. shame in, in Rises, Batman tells him, you know, John, you got to wear a mask, right? Like, because. You know, you got to protect your family or whatever. He should have been like, I already had a mask and it didn't help. <laughs> it was a hockey mask. And I got a skate in the face. Yeah. The skate in the face was nice. I was shocked by that. The gore in this one is a little bit more Friday the 13th, a little less Halloween, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's directed by Steve Miner. Now, do you remember that name, George? Of course you don't. I do. He did Friday 2 <laughs> and 3. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. He sucked at three, but that wasn't his fault. We've already kind of given that explanation. But Friday 2, one of the better ones. He did this one too. Yeah. And and it shows. No, yeah. I saw saw his name and I said, I know that name. And Dan's going to ask me where I know it from. And I'm going to say, I don't know (laughs) where I know it from. But I did recognize the name. Now, did you take any notes or am I just going to guide you through this? No, I did. Let's hear some notes, man. Let's hear some initial impressions. Um,. Da, 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 ya, da, da. The pulling up the notes theme song. Ya, da, 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 ya, da, da, da. <laughs> okay, my first note um was about the hockey mask. Um, but we already talked about that. And cool hockey skate kill. Um Oh, I laughed out loud when um the dude's friend was was like, Oh, you're 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 a uh Oedipus enabler and you're gonna you know, blah, 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 and like basically described Norman Bates. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I laughed out loud because I was like, that's fantastic. There's and that. then he I even mean, says, you know, I mean, the motel. Exactly, right. Yeah, yeah he's like, you're going to end up like managing a motel with your mom. I was like, oh, that's so good. Is it good? But I little, don't know. <laughs> little, no, no, no. Little did I know. I mean, I thought it was like, I mean, obviously it's like fan service good, not like, yeah. I thought it was good. I thought it was funny, but I didn't know how much Psycho was to come at this point. So, oh, there was so much more. No, yeah, there was yeah. way more. <laughs> um, so there's a jump scare in this movie about like every two minutes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Dude, it was so predictable. I was like, like. They kind of do that on purpose, like because then when you get the real jump scares, you're not expecting them. Maybe, maybe them, yes, but maybe no. But but like you know, you know, Myers just broke into the campus, right? And you know, like you know, Ron's like rummaging through his truck, like trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and you know, so I'm like, okay, he's on the campus. It's like, it's been about five minutes. We're due for a jump scare, <laughs> you know? And then, you know, boom, it zooms to, you know, Laurie, and she's, you know, like, in that alley or whatever, and 
she sees Michael and he's in the distance and she's like freaking out and she thinks it's a vision, but it's not a vision, but maybe it is a vision. And I'm like, it's going to be a jump scare right here. And it's like, boom, <laughs> there's that dude, that dude, what, what was his name? Will or something? Yeah. Will. Yeah. It was, it was like, so poor man's, uh, George but Clooney. I, <laughs> but I didn't even, I didn't even predict it when the, you know, when, when she saw Michael, like I predicted it like 45 seconds before that just by saying, yeah, we're due for one. Anyway, I, I thought the most effective jump scare in the whole darn movie was when Ronnie pops up and stops her from further mutilating the corpse, presumably of, uh, Michael Myers. I thought that was a pretty good one. Cause you're just like, you're looking at the right side of the screen. You're expecting Michael to pop, and instead, Ronnie pops in from the left. I'm like, yeah, okay, I like that one. That's a good one. That was okay. I was really surprised when you know Laurie reached down and pulled the knife out of his chest. <laughs> I did not think she was gonna get that far, like actually get it out. I thought that Michael was gonna jump way before she was able to do that. It reminded me of the blocking in the closet scene in the first Halloween when she comes out and has to step over Michael and you know he's going to grab her, but he doesn't. And right. And it's like, oh, it's just even more tension. Well, she kept dropping the knife in the first movie, so they kind of did the opposite. Well, she dropped the knife in this one, too. That's why she had two. No, she, no, she did it in this movie, too, because after she stabs him out the balcony window or whatever, the balcony door, and he falls onto a table and has a knife in his chest... She still has a knife in her hand. And I, I remember saying to the television, don't take your eyes off him. Don't take your eyes off him. And like she turns around, she drops the knife. I'm like, don't drop the knife. <laughs> like, <laughs> turn around, drop the knife. Like, what is this? Like, this, I mean, obviously, like, they're doing that because that's what she's supposed to do. There is a, there is a, a bunch of other stuff that was, like, on the nose from the first movie. Like, um... You know, obviously it's um it's her son and his girlfriend. And she's like making them hide in the closet. It was exactly like the kids she was babysitting in the first one. Do right? as I say. Yeah, you know, you know, exactly. Go up there, shut the door, don't let anybody in. Why what's going on? Just do what I say. Right? And then Oh, yeah, when she hands the keys to the car over, right? And she tells him to go down to like the Beckett's house or something, or what was the name? Anyways, it was exactly like go to the McKenzie's house, like call the police, right? right? It was ex- it was like the same line, it was the same thing. So that scene. Well, they also do the me. classroom thing. Oh, the classroom scene! Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, the fate, the fate, uh, conversation about Victor Frankenstein. Yes, so with uh, what what was her what was her name? Well, it's Molly? Michelle Williams. Uh, what is her character name? I don't have that. I think, it's Molly. Molly. I think it's her name. Molly yeah. sees him in the garden. There's a girl mm-hmm. in the garden. There's yeah. a girl in the garden. <laughs> Do you recognize Michelle Williams, George? Uh, that's Molly? Yes, the blonde. No. No, I don't. Yeah, the blonde. She is important, uh, not just because she's a major character in this movie. Uh, she was a star of Dawson's Creek. Which oh, okay, no, created yeah, by the guy that. that did Scream. Right. They show Scream 2 on the TV. This, I mean, this movie only happens the way it happens because Scream was so successful two years earlier. I never mm-hmm. saw Scream 2, so I saw Scream on the television, but I thought it was just like a knockoff Scream. Yeah, I, mean, I, was yeah, like, oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, there's like this knockoff Scream on the, on the TV. Like, it's not the real Scream because I know that one. Yeah, but that, that was, was Scream 2. Scream was two. that footage from a real Scream movie? Yeah, it, it was, was Scream 2, because it was Sarah Michelle Gellar, right? Sarah Michelle Gellar, yeah. Yeah. Oh, would you look or at Gellar. that? Or <laughs> But anyway, there's a Scream connection, not just because this movie only happened this way because of the success of Scream, but also Michelle Williams from the show that, you know, uh, Kevin Williamson put on the, on the map. This movie well, was didn't really... Didn't Kevin good. Williamson produ- help produce this movie? Uh, I I imagine he had to. If he didn't, he should have gotten the check. I think he had anyway. something to do with the production. Yeah, I think he was. I thought I saw his name with uh, with the uh, Evil Brothers as a producer. 
He is a co oh yeah, co executive producer along with they who shall not be named. Exactly. Interesting. I don't know if he had anything with the writing of it, but I know that he collaborated with Jamie Lee Curtis a little bit with the creation of this movie. And they did go ask John Carpenter and he said no. <laughs> 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 well, you know, if you can't get John Carpenter, Steve Miner's about as darn close as you're going to get. Yeah. He's a heck of a director. I know uh, Friday 3 stinks. We've gone over it. It's not its own fault. Plus, it's fun to watch with a group, right? But Friday 2, among among the best slashers, and this one's right up there with it. I'm just going to say up front, this is pretty good. Yeah. I had fun watching this. Unless, of course, George okay. didn't like it, in which case, you know. Well, yeah. no, it's not that I didn't like it. It's like, is it as good as Friday 2? No. No. But no. it's it's fine. But we spared you the the botchels, the botchery that was the sequels of Halloween. So you're actually seeing part 7 after part 2. So you didn't have to see 4, 5, and 6. The, uh, so this is okay for you. What it, what was it in the Omen? It wasn't the Devious trilogy. It was the. Uh, I think what they call talking it. Talking about the the Mark. Yeah, they talk about six 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 being the diabolical trilogy. We spared you the diabolical trilogy of Halloween's four, five, six, and six. <laughs> is it trilogy or right. trinity? Well, but trinity trilogy. It's trinity when it's the devil. It's a trilogy when it's the middle of the Halloween movies. <laughs> Oh, word, yeah, word. I mean, four, four and five are not too bad, but skipping mm. them saved you 15 years of anguish because you're getting Jamie Lee again. Yeah, it wouldn't have taken me that long to uh, get through those uh, five movies, I don't think, but that's fine. Would have been a lot of fast-forwarding, a lot of cursing. Mm. Yeah. Nah. You, you'll still enjoy them, just for different reasons, in the future. I'm going to have to watch them just to witness how bad they are. Oh well, let's happen. put it this way: you, you have to be introduced to Danielle Harris because she's actually a huge part of the horror community, and you wouldn't know who she was unless you saw Part Four or Five. So, or the other two she's in. What? <laughs> uh, huh? Oh, she's sequels. in the the Rob Zombies. Yeah, <laughs> but that's an homage, if anything. I mean, it's just. Uh... You know, if Rob Zombie could have gotten Jamie Lee Curtis to be in his Halloween, he would have done it. Who would... I think. I mean, there's a, there's a question. Like, who would he have cast her as? Right? And we're, we're going to exclude George, because he, he hasn't seen these movies. Right, right. But trying to think of what role... I mean, she would have been like Mrs. Strode, probably. Or they could have cast her as Myers' mother. But his no, wife but you know he's going to put like that. Cherry Moon <laughs> in every yeah. so. Oh, the things we have yet to show you, George. Just wait. Your time will come. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they did a real good job in Halloween H2O of continuity as best you can 20 years later. I mean, like even down to the detail of like the arm scar on Lori. They don't overplay it. Mm. You know, they don't focus on it. But if you notice when she wakes up, uh, from the nightmare, she's got definite scarring on that arm from the initial attack. Now, to reopen it again was a little silly, but like I get what they're going mm. for. But her oh look was funny. Like she looked down at it, like you got to be shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> she was good. I mean, this movie is not. This is not a movie for people who have not seen other Halloween movies, right? This isn't the first one you should right. walk in and see. Certainly not. But it is full of fan service for people who've watched the first one, first two, for 20 years waiting for a good sequel. So, I mean, it made a choice, and I think it executed. You know, it's funny. Mm-hmm. About 20 years, one of my notes is, how many times are they going to remind me that it's been 20 years? A lot. And how many Dude. times are they going to say everybody is 17? <laughs> 17. Dude. It's in the title. 17. 17. What was the 17 thing? She was 17. When she, she was, was 17. She was 17. Okay, in the first And so movie. was her sister. Seems to be the uh, magic number. Uh. Michael Myers is a big fan of Winger. <laughs> it's funny. I put um, 
we get more out of Jamie Lee Curtis in her first scene than we did in the entire eight, Halloween two. <laughs> like when yeah. she wakes up in that that nightmare, you 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 get that scream right away that you can't miss, and you have missed. And then like she does all this acting in the first what five minutes of the movie, and it's like where was all that in Halloween two? I mean, really? Yeah, she was she was busy being uh you know put out by the drunk doctor. If so. you put <laughs> Two and two together from the TV version of Halloween one, which George, you haven't seen that yet, but when they were making Halloween two, they added additional scenes to Halloween one for TV. So it would run the right amount of time with all the cuts. Mm -hmm. One of those scenes is very similar to her flashback scene from Halloween two. When she remembers being a child and going to see Michael in the asylum only in this scene, he's right. in the asylum and he's written the word sister on the door. So it like uh, sprinkles okay. that brother sister stuff into Halloween one, but only in the TV cut. Okay. The reason yeah. I bring that up is you could play H2O the way that they present what has happened in the past. You could present H2O as a sequel to Halloween, the TV cut, disregard Halloween two completely. And I think it would track. There's just not a lot drawn from what... I mean, what happens in Halloween 2, right? Like, 10 more minutes of Laurie, and then a bunch of people who don't matter get knocked off by Michael Myers. So, like, they don't yeah, really have to... And then the thing where... They, how they deal with him burning up in that fire, and they're just like, oh, I never found the body. Like, that's a pretty big cop-out. But if it's a direct Huge. sequel to Halloween, the TV cut, it isn't a cop out. Did you catch that? No, you're right. So, I mean, in a lot of you're ways, right. this is Halloween two better again. Yeah. I mean, it's Halloween two better than Halloween two, but is it really Halloween two or is it just Halloween one again? That is a very interesting question. Is it a it's reboot? Both. Is it a remake? Is it a sequel? Is it a little bit of all of those things and yet also the seventh movie somehow? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A sequel? A sequel. A sequel boot. <laughs> I don't know what this movie is, but I'm pretty I sure. I can't wait for the Octa boot. Oh my gosh. You don't even know. You don't even know what you're in for. Uh, <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, it's a sequel. I'm not sure what it's a sequel to, but I'm thinking it's the sequel to the TV cut of the first one <laughs> because there's just not enough from Halloween 2 in here. And it's got stuff that isn't in the original version of Halloween, so it has to have something in between. They completely crapped on Halloween 2 if this is the real Myers because his eyes are not shot out. He's not burnt. And Dr. Loomis isn't burnt. Presumably, he, he lived long right. enough that he had a nurse into old age. That's why I was confused. I'm like, she's his nurse? He didn't seem like he needed a nurse. Well, she worked with him, and then they said towards the end of his life she was his caretaker. But he didn't recognize yeah. her in Halloween, too. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> yeah, know. so he had to have lived much longer. I, I don't know, man. I tend to agree. Like, they just... They just pretended like Halloween 2 didn't exist here. Yeah, and Halloween 3. But she did and say Halloween I saw 4, him burn. And Halloween 5 and Halloween 6. Right. <laughs> I think they kind of point out some of the things from 4 and 5 on that wall bulletin board. There uh, were an awful lot of pins but, on that bulletin board. Yeah. Bull, bull, at, on the bulletin board at the beginning. The expositional bulletin board, which if you're going to cram a bunch of exposition in and retcon a bunch of things, uh, newspaper clippings <laughs> are not a bad way to do yeah. it. Yeah. But the newspaper clippings only covered really the first incident for the most part. I didn't mm -hmm. I might have I might have missed one. But for the most part they were just the Haddonfield incident from 78, which is it one, is it one and two, who can tell cuz it's the same event. So But like Travis said, she did say I saw him burn, which yeah. would be a Halloween 2 thing. So Yeah. Mm hmm. Get me somebody on the phone. Yeah, here's here's why it works, guys. It's because we don't try to fill in too many details. It's James Gum again, right? We have details. We don't have all right. the details, but we have enough that we can just 
run with it. Didn't didn't you let him burn in that hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Just doesn't work. You look, remote. It's you not. You look like you're about. You look like you're about seventeen. <laughs> oh, geez. are you are you about the size fourteen? Oh God, here we go. <laughs> speaking of uh, you running, him up. speaking of running with it, uh, don't. If you're gonna get chased by Michael Myers, don't run through the kitchen. Because he's going to grab a butcher right. knife. I mean, you're just going to arm your attack yeah. guys. Come on. You, you took him to the arsenal. I do like that he never checks behind the couch still. He, like, he never learned in 20 years. Like, oh, these chicks all hide behind the couch. I think I missed that. Oh, at the beginning when he's chasing sm- a smoky nurse, Marion. She hides behind the couch just like with the Lori fight in the first one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But instead of a knitting needle, it's a fire poker. Right. And it ends a lot worse for her. Yeah, sure do. Hmm. You, you know what I was thinking when I saw that Laurie had a son? What's that? I was like, well, because obviously, like, you know, she's not a virgin anymore. So I'm like watching this movie like, oh, she's going to be fucked. Yeah. And uh, right? I mean, a couple of times she almost survived, was right? by that creepy teacher guy. Hmm. Oh, that guy was so gross, right? Yeah. I, what was his... Like, is that Alan Arkin's son? I think it is, yeah. Hmm. I always liked Alan Arkin, but I'm not really a fan of this knockoff of George Clooney. Well, and I wouldn't mind him if he wasn't like talking about getting his Creepy. nipples pierced with the girls who invited him to... It's just like, ugh. I didn't, Actually, I didn't mind that because that was uh, kind of just him being funny. It wasn't creepy. Yeah, I actually thought that was funny. I thought that was kind of funny. That was something maybe a dad would say to, like, kind of t- turn the, like, I don't know. That's something I would I would probably say if my kid said something stupid. I'd like, come back at him with something stupid. When my daughter's about 17, I might whip that one out. Yeah. You know? I could it's like, nah, like, what are you guys I'm doing gonna, tonight? I'm going to get. I'm gonna get my nipples pierced tonight, so can't go you know yeah i didn't find that creepy it's a good, the other it's a good dad joke to each their own i yeah. guess to each their it's own. a good dad joke it's a good thing it's not a video Great podcast because i just made a very mean face <laughs> <laughs> just like Ooh. well i thought it was a good a good comeback to her sarcasm that's all i didn't see yeah, it for anything she, else she sarcastically invited him along which obviously she doesn't want him along and and he's like you know, yeah, I'm it's like a bald guy and... saying, "I got to get my hair washed." You know, it's just yeah, yeah. I'm not he's... going out tonight. I got my getting my hair done. And it it's reminded like, well, me a little bald. bit of what could have been in Friday Eight with that annoying teacher student relationship. Like if they hadn't tried to go for the blackmail thing in Friday Eight, they could have mm. gone for something a bit more like playful. This would have been that. It also, I guess, it kind of plays along with what Bob says as they're getting out of the van in the first one. Uh, the kind of way, way gross for now, but back then just, just joking, like, ugh. so okay, fine. <laughs> Still gross though. I mean, you, but you know what else is kind of gross, but also like legit creepy is the public bathroom scene. Yeah, for a scene at the rest stop, like where nothing really happens, but played it's very, for attention. very accurate. Yeah. I was waiting for him to do something, and I was happy he didn't. He's got a heart. I kind of, I kind of had a feeling that nothing was going to happen there, because before they go in, they see the car and the the tires all busted up, right? Mm-hmm. So when she put the pocketbook down and you see the keys, I was like. I kind of put two and two together and I was like, okay, he's just going to get the, he's just going to take the car. That's all he's, that's all that's going to happen here. But then he I ends thought. up with the most conspicuous car I've ever seen in a slasher <laughs> movie. <laughs> Should have right. been driving the hearse or something. Right. And that like, that was one of the things I thought was like, you know, this is like the nineties. And wh- I was like, what is this car from like the twenties? Like, what is this truck? I don't right? know, man. It's about as conspicuous as if he'd stolen, like, one of those monster energy drink cars where they wrap it in the stickers. <laughs> right, right. I'm saving or that like, for my uh, sequel to Halloween when... 
Or like uh, the monster truck grave digger. Or oh my like gosh, yes. Bigfoot. Red Bull no. gives you wings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like the truck that Jeepers Creepers drives. You exactly. Know, I don't think you've seen that. So I have seen that. Why have you seen that? Somebody showed oh, okay. that to me at some point. Yeah, it's like a weird bread truck from like 1930. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? It You know what it was effective at? Knowing when... Yes. No. Knowing when Michael Myers was driving by. Yeah. For the viewer right. of the movie. I mean, it does... It you couldn't miss him. Out. Yeah. Well, it was no different than that station wagon he was driving around in. Well, if the big white face what? mask thing wasn't a tip that it was Michael Myers, he's also in a funny looking right. truck. I mean... Maybe it was a little too conspicuous. Speaking but of uh, still, too conspicuous, the conspicuousness guys. and cars. How about Norma, my favorite character in this movie? Yes, in her beautiful car. George, were you on the level with all that was going on with that car and that Norma? Which one? I know Norma? he's going to say no. She's oh, the boy. old lady. She has like a nice heart-to-heart moment with Lori before yeah, she gets in yep, the old yep, car. Yep. Yeah, I remember that jump scare. Her secretary, I think she was. Yeah, I didn't notice the car. What was it? Mm. Any idea who that lady was? Mm. (laughs) That lady who said for a moment to Lori, if I could be maternal for a moment. Stop it. It's Janet Lee, dude. That's that's her mom, her real life mom. For real? Lead from Psycho. Marion Crane herself in the same car. That's the car from Psycho. Holy shit. So, yeah, and they played is a the lot psycho, of psycho music when she was walking towards her car. Yeah, the Herman music <laughs> comes on. Yeah, man. This yeah. is, it, there's a lot of psycho here, more than you thought. Holy, dude, yeah. holy shit, dude. I just, how did I not catch that? Her name is and Norma. She also takes Norma, yeah. <sighs> wow. And I believe she takes Brackett's line, right? Doesn't she say something like, uh, we're all entitled to one good scare? She does. She lifts that line she straight does. out of yeah. Sheriff Brackett. Yeah, it was a good moment, because I don't know how much longer she lived after that. So I think uh, that was kind of cool for her to get to do that with her mother. Yeah, it was really nice. And kind of hokey, but like a fun, like a lot of this movie, fun fan fun service. Hokey. Better yeah. than, you know, Creed on the radio at one point, which... Oh, God. I was like, what's this? Really? Creed? Creed. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you watch the credits? Because they stopped the Halloween music to put on a Creed song. Oh, did they really? They played that song again in the <laughs> yeah. credits? Oh. Yeah. I'm like, really? Uh, Is this going to sell the album? It was successful enough that Creed actually produced the Scream 3 soundtrack. Mm. And like had production credits Dan, and picked all the songs. Dan, I thought... And- I thought you liked Creed. I, I like Creed, man. But like, dude, dude's got like like the Mesa amp and like all the PRSs because of Creed. Yeah, no, then, my guitar rig like, very much reflects my Creed fandom when I was a child. But I am aware that that song does not fit this movie <laughs> and the music video. I remember even in '98 being like, "Oh God, like this video yeah. is not good." But yeah, the Scream 3 soundtrack actually kind of rocks. And it's good Creed songs, not weird. What's this life for? What is this doing in this movie uh, mm. song? And the, the soundtrack, Scream 3 soundtrack, I'll stand by. It's pretty good. It's got a lot of weird, fun, heavy stuff. It's got a cool song by System of a Down. Like, it's good stuff. This song in this movie, uh, not so good. How many Screams are there? Five? Four. Four and then one coming. one is coming out. Yeah, four and one coming. Wow. You got a lot of work left, man. <laughs> There's a lot left to be seen. Dude, sometimes it amazes me how much shit I don't know. Mm. You know? The fact like, that you did not know that was Janet Lee. I'm like, he's going to recognize her. He's got to recognize her. No, I didn't. I didn't recognize her. And then I'm like, he's going to hear the music. He's going to know the music. <laughs> he's going to recognize the car. No, none of it. But it's beautiful now that you've pointed it out to me. Mm. I don't think it's hokey. I don't think it's hokey at all. I mean, I mean, it is. It is hokey. But like, it's. I don't know. Like, if you it's have no the opportunity to having... do that, you have to right. do it. Yeah, 
I I love it personally. It's one of the better castings. Well, and I thought they did a good job with with John the son. Yeah, I love the Hartnett. Josh Hartnett is like perfect. I think it's cool that they were doing quarantine haircuts back in the late nineties. I thought that was a more recent mm. thing, but <laughs> I don't know what's going nah. on with that dude's hair. Nah. Uh, but bed bedhead was huge back then. I I guess. Uh, but I thought the mother son stuff was real well developed. You know, naming him John made me kind of mm-hmm. giggle. You know, hardy hardy. Uh, but the moment when he gets permission to go on the trip, and he kind of just bites out a thanks, mom, right? Turns, and then they both simultaneously look anguished for different reasons. Like, I was like, man. Yeah, right. This, this is good, like, relationship stuff. You don't normally get, you wouldn't get this in Friday the 13th Part 7. No, not at all. Well, maybe no. 7. 7 has some good And same with when she stuff. finds him out and about in the town. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that creepy doctor, too. Well, she's but like the uh, the, when she catches him out in the town. Yeah, I loved her. Uh, I loved her uh, ordering another Chardonnay. Mm. That Today. was fantastic. It was a good. Uh, I mean, really, Jamie Lee Curtis. I mean, we all know she's like an actual real actress, unlike so many of these people in these movies. But right, it stuff like her entire uh, self medication bent from like the prescription. Uh, prescriptions yeah. in the medicine cabinet to the alcohol yep, when the he table. opened that yep and her ability to just manage that kind of manic on the edge but under control for most of this movie like uh, she's so good man mm. and there's a lot of subtlety in that scene where she's talking about uh the different steps and stuff that she's done yeah you know just try to make her forget or get by it's good stuff. It's way more well de- well developed than any character in Halloween up to this point. Even original Lord, mm. who is just like the smart girl who doesn't make out with boys. I think Ronnie is even more developed than most of the Halloween characters. And his fiction is the scariest thing in any of these <laughs> movies. <laughs> it is it is great that it's LL doing these these uh, erotic uh, stories because <laughs> most of his rap music is erotic so it's kind of funny to see him doing that George are you familiar with the works of one LL Cool J uh, I mean I know who he is okay because that's, that's Ronnie and he's great and pretty much the thing that kills the franchise incidentally <laughs> why is that because of with the success of what Hello, Cool J brought to this movie. Oh, right, 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 right. Stuff happens. <laughs> Kung Fu Stuff kicks happens. are given. And that's the end Wait, of the Don't franchise. make me laugh. <laughs> Sorry. Don't make me laugh. You're going to get a cough fest. <laughs> oh. Oh, but man. yes, I agree. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. We, we, no, you don't. We, but you will. Eventually. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Someday. Yeah. <sighs> I do like the the fire the fire hazard Halloween party. Uh, I thought that that was a mm. really dumb idea. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, but at one point, you know, the joking kind of kept going to the point that I I have to ask: Were they actually gonna have a four way orgy if Michael Myers know. doesn't show up? Because that Charlie character is awfully committed to all yeah. of them banging each other, and no one seems to be against the idea. No. Yeah. And it's funny that he's the goofiest looking out of the four. And he's he's the one that's coordinating this whole thing. Like, you're looking at him, and like, he doesn't fit in with the rest of them. He might be the closest to a Dan in any of these movies. It's kind of sad. Oh, okay. It's just... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, I sometimes you just, you just see yourself on the screen, you're just like, oh, no. <laughs> You have to admit he was kind of out of her league. Oh, for, I mean that's what, this is what I'm saying. Just this is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, he was in Jumanji. <laughs> well, I don't know who you dated in high school. That's what it was. Yeah, the kid from Jumanji. When he grew up, it was like, eh, he looks weird. <laughs> yeah, he he dorked out real bad. Uh, but that's okay. You know the the world takes all kinds. Some of us end up in podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We all have a face for radio. 
<laughs> oh, geez. Uh, as everyone's going to find out when my uh, interview with John Carpenter posts, mm. it'll be up soon on the YouTubes. You can you hear, keep him, that in. <laughs> hear him deny uh, that he ever saw the Lindsay movies after initially sounding like a person who likes Lindsay movies. So Deny, deny, deny. Deny, deny. Hesitate and then deny. You guys figure it out for yourselves. I love John Carpenter. He's great. You know what's um, funny? You sent that video to us of you a while ago. Yeah, you know, a while ago. And we've been joking about it like on the pod for a while. So like <laughs> no one knows what we're talking about. Yeah, people are finally going to we're going to pay off jokes that we've been making since like right. uh, June. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so like if you know, like all our regular listeners that are like, what the hell is he talking about? John Carpenter like saw that stuff later. What, what is he talking about? When that releases, <laughs> that's, there it is. It's the missing piece, man. Your world is going to make so much more sense when you've seen my dumb face. It's going to be like WikiLeaks. Picking on John <laughs> Carpenter. You're so polite. Uh, You're so polite when you pick on him too. Well, I don't want him to hang up on me. I'd paid a lot of money to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You got to ride the edge just enough that you, you get your point across, but they don't hit that disconnect button or they don't mm. fail to send you the video clip like they promised. Like, mm. I had to do what I had to do. Oh, is guys. that how that works? Yeah, they sent me a video and it was all over. And then ah. I just cropped it and put it up. Oh, I thought you recorded it on your end. No, no. I trusted that I wouldn't piss them off enough that they would still send me the video. Interesting. Phew. Probably, you probably didn't bring up the uh, Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Oh, it was on my list of stuff. Then to he would have turned you off. But we didn't get there. <laughs> we ran out of time. It's too bad. We ran out of time. We gotta go. <laughs> so Charlie, speaking of Charlie, uh, ends up getting killed because he has to go off and look for a corkscrew. Hey, Ted, where the hell's a corkscrew? Mm. Dudes. I mean... <laughs> The only thing is, Steve Miner didn't direct part four of Friday, so it's just like a happy coincidence or an odd like cross franchise reach. I don't know. At this point, the Jason movies are you know he's gone to hell, and we're waiting for X and for Freddy versus Jason. Like this is the Wait, best who's Friday waiting movie. Waiting for X, well, nobody. We as a nation <laughs> of people wanting more Jason okay. movies. <laughs> Timeline wise, we haven't yet had X come out and Freddy vs. Jason is still in development. So, this is right. the best Friday the 13th movie we've had since Friday 8. And so, if they want to reference Friday mm. 4, I'm cool with it. Just somebody save that franchise, please. I, I think, I think uh, they did. And then they stopped making them. Yeah. What was uh, Charlie's girlfriend's name with the. With the, uh, with the Doc, the Doc Martens. Mm. Sarah. I think it's Sarah, yeah. Did, did you notice? I'm sure you guys did. When uh, when Myers was stabbing her repeatedly, you didn't see anything. You just heard the... Was she night. yelling, he's killing me? No, no, no. Did the blood That's run funny. down the okay. drain? <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> he's killing me. Um, I don't know. Did the blood run down the drain? But it was just like it was like oh, it was like just it was so shower scene from Psycho, yeah, yeah. so Psycho. Yeah. Well, and by that same uh, token, it's so opening scene of Halloween, right? Michael mm. stab, 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 stab. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. It's all the same DNA, man. There's but a that, lot of homages in this movie. That leg injury was so gnarly. Mm. Yeah. Like in a movie was. of not a lot of gore. That sneaks up on you. You were mm. like, because when the elevator or the whatever the thing is called, um, like crushes her leg, you're kind of like, at least I was like, what? Wait, was it her foot in there? Was it her just like what? Because I, I thought she had her leg in there still. I'm like, okay, it hit her in the bad spot, right in the shin. Right, and then and then she got her leg Eesh. out of there, and. Then there wasn't any mystery as to what part <laughs> of her leg was in there. They answered your question with gusto. Mm. Yeah, because I saw her reaction. She's like, ah, and I'm like, what was that, her toe? Or like, no, no, that was her whole damn foot. What's funny is I think everybody who steps in and out of an elevator 
at least for one second thinks about what happens if this thing drops right when I'm getting on. Right. That I always think that. And I'm like, they showed you what happens. But that's just a uh, butler. Mm, so yeah, they would have cut her leg off if it was... If it was... Oh, gosh, mm. that's gross. And immediately hey. after this scene, well, maybe not right immediately, but my next note after this scene was the first of two head tilts. They went a little right. heavy on the head tilt. They yeah. did. <laughs> and it's around this time that they start to overexpose the mask. There's like yes. a yes. point in this movie right after that chase where it's suddenly there's too much light in every shot and I'm seeing too much eyeball under mm-hmm. that mask and I'm just checking out little by little. Did you catch the one scene where there's a CGI on the mask? No. Okay, there's, uh, I believe it's right before the banquet hall scene where the tables, there's a, there's like a shot of, they CGI'd his mask. I think it's right around when he, uh, I can't remember who he's about to kill, but yeah, it's bad. I'm surprised you didn't catch it. Oh God, it's a search result. Oh God, look at it. Ugh. <laughs> Like it's a when you type it into Google CGI mask, it's like the first result that comes up. So it's yeah, it's bad. It's well known. I don't know why they had to do it. It's, yeah, it's pretty well known. Oh no! It looks like Green Lantern. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Well, I remember in the trailer, the mask is different than it looks in the movie. So I don't know what happened in production, but. Even shot they to shot, to, the uh, eye holes change so much. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, I get that they're going for this ending with humanity, right? Like, they probably know exactly that they're doing this. It's just not the choice I would have preferred. But, man. No, I, I thought the same thing, in fact. Um, when, you know, Myers... Well, spoiler alert. My, Myers is pinned between the van uh which side note had an acceptable amount of fire beneath the engine for a crash and a pretty good Mm. crash overall as far as these movies go and the budgets yep yep it was very good um and he starts like reaching out to her and she like starts like kind of like reaching back i'm like what is this shit yeah yeah what is like a nightmare too what is this i love you lisa (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh man yeah the the ending is it goes for something is this where we fix the movie i don't know that you fix this movie i think you just take it as <laughs> a a pyrrhic victory right better than the other ones not a lot you're gonna be able to do to fix it though. i think one thing that would have fixed it is not let the students leave on a trip and have that place full of people and have him just go nuts on that place. Like a murder hornet in a bee's nest. Yeah, I think that would have been cool, because just leaving four people on campus, it kind of tells you what's going to happen. Yeah, but it's Halloween, right? Like, we don't want a Friday body count. We don't want to have some kind of, like... I mean, maybe we do, but this one, I think, is just trying to stick so much to the homage to the original Halloween formula that they have to give you... Almost an Seclusion. identical body count. Yeah. Now, I don't know. At he one doesn't point, have to kill every kid, but... This uh, chase scene is pretty bonkers at the end, right? It's like flipped yeah. on its head from the original. She is no longer the prey. Lori is the predator. She locks herself in with the monster to face her fate, as discussed with Molly earlier in the earlier. classroom. Uh, one of the more depressing signs of the times we live in... Uh, at one point, Lori grabs a fire extinguisher and bops old Michael in the head with it. And my first thought was, oh, she also watched that shelter-in-place video that all our work makes us watch. Run, hide, fight. <laughs> she was ahead of her time, guys. Mm. I've never seen that video. Have you guys had to watch that video for any of your jobs? I've had no. to watch it for multiple jobs no. where they teach you to run first and then hide. And then if you're cornered by... The active shooter that's going to show up at your work because that's just the world we live in. Grab a fire extinguisher or an office chair and bash his brains in. Hmm. Yeah. 
you know what I I did think when I was watching this movie. Um, speaking of active shooters and um the most effective defense, that snub nose revolver. Oh my god! I was like, I gotta get me one of those, dude. It was not very accurate. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like it was like she like oh, pulled it finally it, hit its target. She <laughs> she pulled it out of the drawer, and I was like, oh, that's the gun. That's the gun. That's the one. I love there it. It kind of looked like what's his name's gun. It looked like uh, Doctor Loomis's gun, but way smaller, yeah, kind of man. No, way that smaller. like it. That I feel like that gun fit Laurie perfectly. Mm. Well, I mean, know? like physically, it did. The that one shot of her pulling it out of her pants. There's not a lot of room for, you know, right. Movement. But also, like the personality type, like the, you know, it's it's small, right? It's you know, it's uh. Uh, it's reliable, you know. It's uh, it's it totally fits her. It's taken Love by it. the man that's there to protect her, and he fails to protect her with it, just like the one in the first one. Like yes, yeah. It was uncomfortable to watch him walking around behind her, <laughs> like he didn't know what to do with himself. I liked his hand up at one point when he's like, "Don't put that gun over here." Like, <laughs> we are safe <laughs> in this zone. Like he he blocks the that part looked like a guy mm. who really didn't know what to do. But I, I thought it was well acted for that. I think I would not have had a problem with the ending if they kept it local. Like, maybe she barricades herself and does that. Like, I, I just think the whole stealing the van and then driving off a cliff was a little too much. It was definitely an escalation from the earlier, yeah. like, I'm going to lock us in together and I'm going to go out with you vibe. And then, of course, uh, earlier her fri- hiding under the table. Very Friday too, although no one mm-hmm. had any mouse versus Lori debate in this movie. Uh, there was some real Steve Miner notes in that bit that I was like, "Yeah, man, this is still oh, yeah. this is Stevie, Stevie M." <laughs> oh, but it, so I, for her to pay. I see one part, and I'm just thinking, "Oh, the guys are gonna make fun of me for this." But when he uh, he gets hit with the California flag, I just hear Travis being like, "Let's hear how Dan's gonna make this a political statement." <laughs> and I realized, well, guys, uh, this that. is the third Lori versus Michael interaction, right? The infamous California three strike law on film. Ah, boys and girls. <laughs> That's what it is. Everything is politics. Uh, I, I think Michael was reading a uh, Reagan book too at the beginning. He's a big reader, that Wasn't Michael it? Myers. Great driver. He's a big reader, yeah. yeah. Somebody who may not be <laughs> as literate, though. Uh, John, God love him. Uh, Lori busts into John's room at one point tra- trying to test his phone. He's got a Fender calendar on the wall. Did you notice that one, George? Fender guitar calendar? He had a Fender hat sitting there, too. Uh, the calendar was backwards. Was it? <laughs> yeah, like the cover, the outer cover that you'd show at retail was out so it's open but you can't see what month it is guys it's october it's halloween we could just show the october count no right. we're not showing that october we're going to show the whole year but on the back <laughs> holy god fender <laughs> must have paid a lot of money to put that backwards ass calendar next to their hat and their cartoon of a strat yeah i just noticed the hat and i was like oh ron's a guitar player look at that he's an artist hmm. you know it's about the art And that's why he's got such a terrible haircut. (laughs) Right. Uh. I don't know what this movie is, guys. I think it's all the things at once. It's having its cake, it's eating its two, and it's also like ordering more cake for later. It did. No, that's exactly what it did. Because you had the cake and you ate it too because you had, you know, you had, you know, the, the first hour. Right. And then when Lori locks herself in, now you're eating it too. Right. And then you think it's over. Right. Because they put Michael in a body bag. And then you eat more of your cake. That's exactly what it is. And then you go into some sort of diabetic coma. And what comes out of that diabetic coma is a poor memory of what happened that made this movie work. And thus you are given 
Halloween 8, the death of the franchise. But you haven't seen that one yet, so no. spoilers. No, I haven't. Yeah. That movie's not good. I kind of can't wait to talk about it, though. I know. I kind of wish we'd made him watch it, too. Huh. Wait, we're not making him watch it? So, George, let's talk about what we're going to watch next week. No. Uh, so, George, <laughs> tell me, final thoughts. Uh, the Laurie Strode trilogy. Uh, what do you think, man? What are, what are your thoughts on how they managed to, one way or another, bring you to a point uh, at the end of Halloween 7 that may or may not be the right place to be at this point? She's an awesome character. Mm. And she's a great actor. I I really do appreciate the consistency. And even though they reminded me like 20 times that it was 20 years later. 20 years? 20 years. Wait, um, it's 20 years later? 17. I do appreciate the uh, the consistency and just that she's playing that character, you know, 20 years later, literally 20 years later, with the same, if not more, I don't want to say like effort, but like, She's playing it you right. You know it's a this well-developed is not, character. This is not a joke, man. Like, this is... Right. Yeah. I mean, as an actor, like, you look at somebody, and it's like, if you can take a character 20 years later and just pick it up yeah, and continue exactly. the story. That's what's amazing about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like... I get why everyone's so obsessed with this movie or this franchise. Because she is so good. Like... Like she makes it, man. There, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know of a final girl like as that I root for as much as her. Mm-hmm. You know, she kills it, man. Literally. Well, and it's important to point out. I can't wait for you to see her in other things. Yeah, by the time we get to this movie, she's a big time star, right? This isn't like, you know, an upcoming star who's still feeling her way through Hollywood by doing these small pictures, which. She did a number of those in the 70s and 80s, and mm-hmm. they're great. But by now, she is the big star to where the movie had to be good enough for her to sign on to it. So you know right, right away they've done something right if she's back. And then she just right. runs away with it. Absolutely. That's literally how it happened, too. <laughs> like, they made a bunch of movies without her, and then she came to them, and she's like, listen, if we do this, we have to do this but we have to do it by a certain, you know, standard. So then they worked the story around that, and then they got this. Yeah, there's problems with it, but... I forget how good this movie is. Every time I revisit yeah, I was saying I go, that when oh, I was watching man, it. this is actually maybe the second best Halloween to this point. Mm-hmm. Maybe the second best Halloween ever, depending on your stance on a couple of other things. I just wish they didn't have so many masks. <laughs> I was just watching. I was like, my God, it's like the third version of this mask in one movie. Yeah, it's inconsistent as hell. And the CGI mask, now that I've seen it, I will never unsee it. It is mm. burned into my brain. And and the puppy dog eyes at the end of the movie. I'm just <sighs> like, come on. First of all, the, they're both supposed to be shot out. <laughs> Second of all, it's, I, I don't need to see his eyes like this. I don't care. He's the shape. He's got right. humanity, Travis. Humanity. No. No. The shape has no humanity. <laughs> and then Rob Zombie comes upon it. Oh, man. Do you want to just audible and watch <laughs> the Rob Zombie ones real quick? Yeah. No, no, we're not going to put you... people through that. Uh, that's become like a almost a trope in podcasts is, hey, let's watch the Rob Zombie ones and see if we can make it through both of them. Like, <laughs> Def- it's... definitely not the second one. But oh, the first God. one is watchable, but it's not. It's not. Mm. We'll it's let worth George discussion. decide. Let's put it that later. way. Uh, for now, yeah. we're gonna pivot. George, you've seen the Laurie pivot. Strode trilogy. Now we're gonna do some background here. I've run this by John Carpenter. He seemed fine with it. He didn't okay. seem not fine with it. He, ag- <laughs> he watch the video. He's on board with our plan. Uh, what's funny is you've seen the video before, so you, you've heard the plan and you just don't remember. And that's okay. Uh, okay. So, George, 1981, mm-hmm. Halloween 2. We talked about John Carpenter saying he's basically drunk the whole time he's writing it. He thinks it's dumb to rewrite Halloween. 
why are we doing this again? We already made Halloween, right? Now I'm making it again. And you can tell kind of his heart's not in it. Right. Mm. Where his heart was in 1980. So after Halloween, um, pretty much his next project. Still with Deborah Hill, who helped him produce Halloween. Uh, where his heart was was in a different film. Okay. Uh, we are going to watch that film. Okay. Next. Uh, we will go into a lot more detail as to why. But for now, just know that next week, the third week of the fall break, 2021, you are watching John Carpenter's 1980 movie, The Fog. The Fog. Have you ever heard of The Fog, George? I have heard of it. It's it's a weather uh apparition right <laughs> you'll see it now and then on the tv but uh have you ever heard of the movie called the fog do you know anything about it uh i don't know anything about it but i think i do i i mean i've i think i've heard of the fog like the movie the fog i don't know anything about it though but you've never seen it no absolutely right? not no okay rock and roll and so i'm uh, excited we will watch The Fog next week, and then we will follow that up with something else. And I think you will find it to be uh, enlightening. Very good. We're going to give you an opportunity that audiences at the time did not have. Which for was? better or for worse. We'll see. Which it's a, it, we're doing science, guys. Well, hey, listen. This movie, for all its warts, was definitely worth the watch. Yeah, it was worth it, for sure. Um, lots of fan service, Sweet. a little bit like hokey stuff here and there, meh, meh, meh. But like, you know, like it, the the meat was good. It was leaps there. and bounds above Halloween too, which if I remember right, you were hoping we would not like because you didn't want to have to pretend Break to like hearts. it for an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was this was very good. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I was like, you guys don't think this is good, right? <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny when i was watching h2o i'm like i forgot how good this was so i kind of i'm glad i watched it because it's been yeah, so for whatever long. reason it fell off my radar uh as one that i liked and i think it's probably just the ones that precede it just kind of turned me off so bad especially five and six and the other six you uh paul rudd god damn i remember when it came out my my issue with it was a they showed way too much in the trailer like you, you saw her yeah, transition in the that. trailer. You basically saw the entire plot of the movie. You saw her turn. Well, with that the was axe part. Yell, that was part of the tradition. So it's like they ruined the first movie with the trailer as well, according to you. So, <laughs> right. I don't want to say they ruined it, but they definitely took away any surprise. But like I said, it, that's part of the tradition of the uh, Halloween movie, so it makes sense. I mean, here we yeah. are. It, we were recording this about a month before Halloween Kills comes out. I still haven't watched a trailer for it because I'm not doing that to myself. I'm not going to let them ruin it for me. I want surprises. That's when a I, smart move. When I stream that thing because I'm not going to the theater for that one. It's a very but. smart move. Also, guys, like round of, a, round of applause for Travis. Oh, man, gutting it out. Dude. What's that? Oh, yeah. I'm like, I, I've had three... Like cold sweat, uh, dude. Episodes since I've what been a trooper. Here. We're <sighs> the things that we do for our fans. Dedication, man. The show must go on, right? Break a leg. Even though I sound like I'm in a can. Break a break a leg, right? <laughs> break a leg. <laughs> Hack along. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Although I'm faring way better than my wife, so. How many days ahead of you is she, though? Uh, she is two days ahead of me. So, mm. but I'm already. I feel like I'm getting better. So, oh man, that that'd be great I'm, if you got a real mild one. Yeah, like I it feels like a really bad flu, but I've been 24 hours without any ibuprofen, so fever is not too bad. So it might be at the tail end, hopefully. Dude, that would be really good. Yeah, that would be really good. Yeah. 
I don't want to end up in the hospital. I know that. No, no, you don't. It's going to be really hard to convince them to let us <laughs> record a podcast. From... <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Can you flip him over? Yeah. Flip him over. He has a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez, that's dark. Just bang on his back. Bang on his back a few just times. The, just like the sounds of the hospital room in the background. Yeah. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Oh, gosh. I make a political joke and you hear beep, 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 beep. <laughs> his BP is high. Uh, He's coding. Oh, somebody cut Dan's feed. Cut Dan's feed. <laughs> He's getting under his skin again. <laughs> That's all right. Dan and Post will fix it. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, well, I appreciate you doing this, Travis. I know it's a big old pain in the butt, and I'm sure your family's wishing you'd stop, but thank you for yeah, that's fine. that, man. I'm just glad I have GarageBand. <laughs> we would have made it work, but uh, this definitely sounds better than you calling in on a handset or something, so good job, Steve. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you for joining us on the Remedial Film Class podcast. As always, you can find us on YouTube, as well as any pod catcher from Apple to Stitcher to Amazon to Spotify. We're on them all. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash remedialfilmpod. You can email us remedialfilmpod at gmail.com. You can find us at Twitter and Instagram at remedialfilmpod. And you can discuss these movies with us in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash remedial film pod. We'll be back next week for phase two of Fall Break 2021, where we look at John Carpenter's 1980 classic, The Fog. (laughs) 